<laughs> Never know what that boy's going to do. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, secret agent man. Okay. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, somebody that knows how to turn uh, my mic down a little bit. Do I need to come back there and do it? One that says Pastor on it. Just slide that little slide down. Slide it down, slide it down. That's good. Praise the Lord. Put my eyes on so I can see it. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians. For the third week in a row, we remain in chapter 1. <laughs> We're talking about benefits of the believer. Benefits of a believer. And today, we're talking basically about authority. Hallelujah. I want you to know you have authority in this world. Amen? Amen? In the book of Genesis, God said He gave dominion of this earth over to Adam and Eve. And yet, when the devil was tempting Jesus, He said He could give Him all the kingdoms of the world. So somewhere between Genesis chapter 1 and the Gospels of when Jesus arrived, there was a switch and change of authority and power. Somebody say amen. 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 And that started with Adam and Eve when they decided to go against the one who gave them the power and authority and they disobeyed. They lived in a virtual perfect atmosphere. I know many, when they read the book of Genesis and see how many years that those early fathers of us lived, they have find it hard to believe. Um, I think of it in terms of the world we're living in now and the things that happened in the 70 years I've lived, and I think about living 900 years and I say, oh Lord. <laughs> I don't want to live that and, and put up with this world. Uh, and you imagine, uh, as much as things have changed uh, since I was a kid, and yes, for you younger ones, I was young once. And uh, uh, they were up here joking, uh, being smart Alex, and saying that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Angel leaned over to me and said, uh, I said, I, uh, you know, something about, and she said, uh, I don't think I was born yet. <laughs> I said, I was in college. She said, I don't think I was born yet. I wasn't, by the way. And she wasn't, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't seem that far back to me to go, you know, they talk now about the 60s being the way back old days. But they lived in such a perfect world, such a perfect atmosphere, and life was so much slower. And if you read about Moses, one thing I find interesting about reading through those genealogies uh, is that uh, the later they had children, the longer they lived in almost every instance. If they had children at the age of 60, they died in the 700s. If they had children in the 80s to 100 to 120, they lived eight, 900 years. It, so it goes to my theory that uh, children take years off their life. <laughs> 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 so, hallelujah. They add a lot of blessing and dimension to your life. But, whew, mercy. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, to live that long, and you know, they didn't even, they didn't even uh, evidently get married and, and start having children until they were, uh, in our day and age, they'd be ready for retirement. And the bloom would have already fallen off <laughs> the flower, amen. But uh, they were just getting started. And uh, uh, 
uh, I don't know how many kids each of them had, but they had a bunch. And, uh, and yet they had a garden, they, had, they, had, they, they were expelled from the Garden of Eden, but they still had a virtual rainforest all over. Uh, and just a marvelous time to live. And because of sin, don't ever, anybody, don't you let anybody ever tell you that God causes disasters, that God sends hurricanes, that God sends tornadoes. I don't believe it for a moment. I believe these things are here because of the sin of man. You can blame us for those things. You can blame man for those things, not God. God created it perfect, and we've been messing it up ever since. Amen. We've been doing a good job of making it worse and worse and worse. Our greed has stripped our land of resources and sucked our wells dry of resources our ambition has caused us to murder and, and have our streams filled with blood. I'm on a roll right now. I'm telling you, uh, it, it, it's, it's man that has caused these disasters because the elements have been changed over and over and over again because of what man has done. Hello? Amen. Amen. Now, don't, don't get worried. I haven't joined Greenpeace. So don't, get, <laughs> don't get nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but I do know that God gave us dominion over this world and that we've been given back to the devil ever since. And that he brags, when he went before Job, or when, excuse me, when he went before God in the book of Job, you know, uh, he, he said, I want to give a report too. God was having all of his angels, his angels of authority, give reports of things and how things were going, what they'd been doing. If you think you're just going to sit on the River Jordan and twinkle your toes in the Jordan for 10,000 years, talking about the old times, you need to get another thing coming. You're going to have responsibilities. You're going to have things to do. Uh, I, I, I couldn't stand to be on vacation forever. I go on vacation a couple of weeks, and I'm antsy to get back to it. <laughs> Amen? So, you know, God's, God's got plans for us, and, and uh, his angels had to give reports. And so the devil comes and says, well, what about me? Let me give a report. So the father says, all right, go ahead. And so he said, well, I've just been going wherever I want all over the world. That was a braggadocious statement of what he had been able to take away from man. You see, he didn't have any power or authority here on earth. We gave it to him. Come on, somebody. Go ahead. We gave it to him through listening to his counsel rather than the counsel of the Holy Spirit that's been given to us to open up the entire everything. And God, in his amazement, or in my amazement to read it, said, have you considered Job? And through the devil's admission, he couldn't do a thing to Job. So, well, you put a hedge around him, I can't touch him. Hello, who's still got the power? Amen. Who's still got the authority? Hallelujah. Amen. And a righteous man was protected when everybody else was fodder for the devil. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. God had so much trust. Excuse me. God had so much trust and so much faith in Job. That he submitted, this isn't my sermon, but it's my sermon. He <laughs> submitted Job to test. Yes. Not because Job had done something wrong, as all of his friends and other believers thought. Hello? Yeah. He let him go through trials. He let him lose everything. He let him go through misery because he knew he could handle it. Amen. Because he knew he was a righteous man. Come on, somebody. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. You're not going through these things because God's mad at you. You're not going through these things because God wants to beat you up because of some deep, dark secret or whatever is going on. He trusts you enough to know that you'll come out giving Him praise. That's right. Hallelujah. You know, if I was Job, I might have said, Lord, you could have just slipped my name out of things. <laughs> you know, you know, Father, why don't you mention me? You know, why don't you put his attention on me? <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
during the time of Noah. And I always get Noah and Jonah mixed up. Noah's the one who floated in the ark, right? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure I get my guys right, because I usually mix those two. Like, I have Jonah on the ark, Noah in the fish. <laughs> During the time of Noah, they were still living four or five hundred years. Noah took him a hundred years to build an ark. If God gave me a task that took a hundred years, I'd have to have somebody to take one of my And I'm, I'm trying to get some people to take one of my Amen? And, uh, and so uh, he comes to him. And he tells him to build this ark. He builds the ark. And up to that time, I believe, if you read in the Bible, you'll find out the way the earth was irrigated, the way the earth was blessed, it was, there was heavy dews and there were springs. There wasn't thunderstorms and lightning storms and rain and tornadoes and hurricanes. None of that existed then. It was, it was still a really nice climate that could cause you to live hundreds of years. But because of the failure of man to give God the honor that was due, because of his sin, and because of how far he went from God, there was, I believe, now, uh, should I go ahead with this? Can I give you a little rope around team? <laughs> the Bible says in the book of Genesis there were giants in the land. The Anakim, the Anakim, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that the Rephidians and so forth. They, they were giant people and they said that, that they were the descendants of the sons of, of God who had uh, relations with the daughters of men, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, some commentaries, some people try to think the sons of God were just the Israelites who had, come on now, the results of their, their cohabitation, their intercourse, the, the results were giants. I believe those sons of God, the same Hebrew words used for sons of God are used for angels, are used yep. for stars and different things. I believe they were, they were angels. Yep. You say, I didn't think, I thought angels were sexless. They could take on human form and probably function in all the human form ways. Good. Come on. In heaven, yes, they're sexless, but not down here. And, and Jesus said, but, but, and, they, and, and these, these people, I believe, were born without the soul that you and I have. They were soulless people. And they were multiplying on the earth. And God said, I'm getting rid of them. They tainted mankind. And I'm going to wipe them off the earth. Now that's a little roperology there. So just... But I know God said He's going to wipe, wipe them all off, right? right. And we've had, uh, if, if, I'm glad God put a rainbow in the sky. I know others have taken the rainbow and make it their own for whatever purposes, you know, but I still see the rainbow as God's promise to us, amen? And then it's not going to work to work earth again, hallelujah. Yes. They also used, well, I'll go along. Uh, and, and, uh, and so I believe that, that the Bible says it began to rain from heaven, and the, the, all the springs gushed forth from the earth, and that's what flooded the earth. And it was since then that you see a dramatic change in the how long they lived. And the dramatic change just starts all of a sudden. Their, 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 their lifespans go from three, four, five hundred years to 100, 120, 150, 140. It drops dramatically. And I believe it's because the elements change, the atmosphere change, and the sun rays and all that and all the harmful rays that were blocked were now allowed to come through and, and there's been a change. So all these hurricanes and all these things, that's because of the judgment of, of God against sin, not against us. Yes. He had to destroy what was happening and the soulless people. Yeah. Also, believe there not be some of them running around today. Yeah. <laughs> Nevertheless, I don't know who, so I'm not going to point fingers, so I can, I can figure out a few candidates, but I'll just leave that up to God. But what I'm saying all this for is that 
God has not changed his mind. The dominion he gave mankind, he has still given. He didn't take it away. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. And it's up to you and me to take back the dominion that we gave the devil in our lives, in our families' lives, in our cities, in our communities, in our entire world. Amen. Yes. And I, man, I could go on all morning long but, but, about all that God has given us and he wants us to take it back. And I believe it's time for we as believers to begin to understand the authority that we have in Jesus Christ and stop being punching bags for uh, the devil and punching bags for ideas that go against God and being afraid to stand up. Amen? I don't want to stand up in anger. I don't want to stand up to fight any person. On the, the, my Bible tells me that no person on the face of this earth is my enemy. I don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I wrestle against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, darkness of the ages, all these things. These are things we battle, amen? Move yeah. past the personality and see the spirit that is operating in that person. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. When you do that, it takes the offense out. Sorry. Hallelujah. The devil wants you offended. Mm. He wants you angry at sinners. He wants you to fight sinners. He loves it. When we get up in anger and fight sinners, all oh, he loves it. There's not an atheist in this world as my enemy. He's just confused. <laughs> he just needs to know Jesus, that's all. Amen? I'm not afraid of him. You think God is afraid of atheists? No. You think, oh no, I don't believe I'm alive. What am I going to do about that? Do you think God's afraid of us? Then why should we be? Amen. Amen? Stand up. Take the dominion and authority of God has given. All right. In a few minutes I got left. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Therefore also, I therefore I also, this is Paul speaking, after I heard, and he's talking to the church at Ephesus, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe, according to the working of His mighty power, which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead, seated Him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things, to the church! Amen. Which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Hallelujah. I love these verses. I, I love this, this, this passage. Uh, such revelation God gave to Paul. He, was, he, he chose the right guy. He was bold enough to speak it when others would have been timid probably to say some of these things for the first time. Paul just boldly proclaimed because he knew that it came from God. When Paul got converted, he, he, there was no, from, from the moment of his conversion, he was a completely different man. I mean, everything, he was ready to preach the next day. I mean, he was ready to go. After his eyes were open, he said, let's go, let's do it. I mean, all of a sudden, he just turned from being an enemy to the saints to being the champion of the saints. Yeah. Hallelujah. But he says some things here that I believe are, are vitally important to us. First of all, you understand then that the, the rest of this chapter after verse uh, 16 uh, is a prayer that Paul prayed. He said, I prayed this prayer for the Ephesians. He also prayed another prayer for them in the, in the, in the third chapter. And, and there's, you need to, to link really those two prayers together and pray those prayers and let uh, see what Paul prayed, not only for them, but for anyone who becomes a believer and loves the Lord Jesus Christ. 
in this prayer still is effective today. Amen? Amen. And he prays his prayer, and he prays his prayer for them because, he says, after I heard, he said, I pray this way because what I heard about you. I have heard your testimony. Somebody has said, if you got arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict? <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, 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 the thing, the testimony. I, I want us to ask ourselves a question today. What is my testimony? What do people say about my faith? I know what the devil says about your faith. The devil says your faith is judgmental, unloving, bigoted. Mm -hmm. That's what the devil says about your faith. Well, what do other believers say about your faith? If someone were to do an in-depth study your life, what would be the testimony that would come? The testimony that came to Paul in general about the church at Ephesus was their faith in Jesus and their love for the brethren. Love the saints. May that be our goal. Amen? Amen. To be known as people of faith and people that love. Hallelujah. Praise God. So because of that, then these, this prayer can be invoked. This prayer can be prayed for those who are loving the brothers and for those that are living in faith. So maybe sometimes we don't know these things or have the dominion we have because our faith wavers and our love is not so quite expressed. Hello? After all, the devil comes, you know, the scary part about this, all, all this thing is, the devil comes to church, you know that? He probably attends church more often than most of us. He's probably a very faithful attendant. And he's here to try to stir us up and to get us, get us not to love one another, to not trust one another, to, die, to, to cause us to be um, fragmented, and how clicks? Hello? Yeah. He comes to break us up. Right. He comes to cause us to not trust each other. Mm -hmm. He comes to cause us to not have faith in one another. Right. And because why does he do that? Because he knows that he can take dominion away from you. He can take authority away from you if you're not walking in faith and you're not walking in love for the brother. Is this okay? Yeah. You want me to hush? No. Hallelujah. So God help us. I want these things. These are marvelous things mentioned here. I want to see them in my life. I want to have these revelations. I want to have all this. But to do that, hallelujah, i got to have a testimony that I'm walking in faith and that I'm operating in love. He said, I give thanks for them in prayers. Hallelujah. Praise God. Too often I think our prayers are, oh God, touch brother so-and-so. He just <laughs> aggravates me in pieces. <laughs> Lord, I just wish you'd touch, take sister so-and-so and just have her, you know, change clothes. She just looks awful in that place. <laughs> I'm looking down here. I'm not back there. <laughs> Hello? He said, I give thanks for them. I give thanks for their faith. I give yes. thanks for their love. Yes. Hallelujah. Are you thankful for your brothers and sisters? Yeah. Amen. You've got a room full, you know, as you kept coming in this morning, right? About just about 10 o'clock, there was just the worship team basically here, one or two. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I just, it just felt so empty without you. And now this, this place just feels full. 
And, and you know, I want it to be fuller. How about you? Amen? Amen. 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 This place just feels full because, not because so much of how many is here, but it's full of faith. It's full of love. It's full of joy because it's full of you who are full of Jesus. Amen? Amen. And I thank God for you. And you need to be thankful for your brother or your sister. Amen. And you need to be thankful for them. And if you see something in them that you don't think is quite right, pray for them. Show your love for them. And if God gives you a word for them, go to them in love and humility, knowing that they may have to come to you next week and, and pray for them. Amen? Amen? That's what the body's for, is to encourage and love one another, lift each other up. I need you. And you need me. And we need each other. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful for you. Praise God. I tell you, I thank God. I, there's not hardly a day that goes by that I don't thank God for every day I've been here. And I'm amazed in all these years because, you know, the, the reward of staying in the same place for as long as, as Linda and I have been privileged to do is you get beautiful little girls that turn into tall redheads. And, and, and you know, you, you, you see these, you see people, uh, you, you baptize them and then you see you baptize their babies and that kind of is a trip but you know you, you just you see all these one or not baptized but dedicated and you just see all these things and you see that and, and it's just a surprise I, I every Sunday I, I, some time ago I know I, I, I really prayed this I, I, I noticed something and I got God I'm excited to go to church today because you're going to send somebody you're going to send somebody that I prayed for a long time ago we're going to send somebody that we planted seeds in a long time ago. It's going to be somebody today that hasn't been coming that's going to show up today. I'm excited. I'm excited about all those that will be there. But I'm excited about the, 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 the little cherry on top you're going to give me this Sunday. And it never fails if there's a cherry on top every week. All right. Every week God blesses with something special. I just say, oh, look at that. God is good. Amen. And you make it worthwhile. Yes, that's true. You make it worthwhile. Without you, there'd be no life ministry. There'd be no history. Mm -hmm. Without you, there wouldn't be men's recovery center. Yep. Without you, there wouldn't be a brother block. Without you, there wouldn't be any of these things. I thank God for you. Amen? So give your tithe, no, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding. Right? Okay. <laughs> In verses 17 and 18, Paul prayed that God the Father would give the knowledge of Christ. Notice how he prays it. He says, I pray a spirit of wisdom. The spirit can come with wisdom. A spirit of revelation. That their eyes of understanding being will be enlightened. And enlightenment is something that just comes to you. It's not something you study out of a textbook. It just comes to you. Hallelujah. And so God has given to us. And, 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 and the other way to look at this is without a spirit of wisdom, without a spirit of revelation, without a spirit of enlightenment coming to me, I will not see Christ for who he is. I will not know who I am in Christ. I've got to have a spirit of wisdom. I've got to have a spirit of revelation. I have to have enlightenment from God. Have you ever been reading the Bible all of a sudden that, that uh, scripture that you've read a hundred times all of a sudden just leaps off the page and something that was there all along just seemed brand new? God just gave you an enlightenment. He opened your eyes. He let you see something. You were ready to have a new revelation. Hallelujah. That's the joy of working, of serving God. And it's the only way to know it. That's why the world doesn't know it. They haven't come to Him and given their lives to Him so that the Spirit, so the Spirit of God can do these things to them. It takes the Holy Spirit. And when you have those things, then the next three things are necessary. Verses 18 and 19. To know the hope of His calling. Hallelujah. What are the riches of the glories of his inheritance? And I feel like a rich man. I look over this crowd and I think about folks 
all over this country, and, and, and all, really all over this world, and I just, I just feel like a rich man. Hallelujah. You can't tell about my bank account, but I'm rich in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe. Because I have the spirit of wisdom, because I have the spirit of revelation, because I have, hallelujah, from Christ an enlightenment of understanding, I can know the hope of my calling. Hallelujah. I, can have, I know that I'm called and that there's a hope that when all looks hopeless, I still have hope. Amen. Hallelujah. And the riches of the glorious of inheritance. Hallelujah. I, you know, every day God can show you something else that you have received just because you're a Christian. Some new revelation, some new divine opening up to see, wow, that I didn't realize. Amen? Amen. And it goes on and on and on and on as God be, to, continues to reveal His riches. His exceeding greatness. He, he talked to, in Revelation chapter 3, He talked to the church at Laodicea and He said, buy of me. Gold, buy of me treasures, buy of me things. Uh, he said, you're, you think you're rich, but you're poor. You need to, you need to take that that you think you're rich with and, and sell it for what I'm going to give you. Amen. Buy of me. Amen. 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 Don't put your hope and your trust in people or other things. Put your hope in Christ. Amen. Amen. Don't expect too much of me. No, no it's 12 o'clock. Don't expect too much of you. Don't expect too much of your brother and sister. We learned through Revere's teaching, we're doing that on Wednesday nights at the end of the third time, marvelous study on the of Satan and on, on offense. We learned that, you know, we get offended by the level of our expectation. If this is a level playing, from, from sinners, you don't expect anything. Amen? You don't expect anything. So when they treat you this much right, you've got this much that you're saying, wow, that's nice. Isn't that nice? They treat me better than I expected. Right? But our expectation for a, left, for a Christian is here. So if we only get this much from them, then we have this much room for offense because we expected more from them. And we expect this much from our pastor. Amen. <laughs> and when he only gives us this much, we got this much room for offense. And our spouse. <laughs> more room. Hello? And that's where we get disappointed. But you can look to Jesus and appreciate all who's around you and know that. Any conflict, any situation happens, it causes us to go and seek wisdom, seek knowledge, uh, drain, uh, get some of that hope refired in us, and we build on Him, not on how we're being treated. Hello? Okay, I got to hurry up. These three things can happen because of the great power God worked in us. He says, if we know the hope of calling, the riches, glory, greatness of the power toward us who believe, then these things, three things open up. Starting in verse 19b. Raised him from the dead. We know resurrection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seated him at his right hand. Amen. In the spiritual realm. So we have in the spiritual realm, we have Jesus. Raised from the dead, seated at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. Now, we know that the Son of God was always the Son of God, and He is who came on the earth. But because, you see, what He did when He took on the form of man is that He, he was always the Son of God. He, he, he always had that power and authority. But now He has it, hallelujah, as a man too. He took man and took us from our low estate and put us up at the right hand of the Father. Can you get it? He yeah. made us heirs and joint heirs with him. Yeah. And those of us who were low and, and you know, ants, respects on the spec. Hallelujah. Because Jesus 
came and lived in the body and, and died and resurrected. Now I'm elevated. You're elevated back to a seat. The power of authority in the heavenly realms. Glory to the Lamb of God. Notice what that means. Verses 21 through 22. Christ spiritual 22a. Christ's position is far above all, according to the scriptures. It says, principality, that's rule. The demons that are trying to rule, hello, he put him far above, not just above. It's not that above, it's far above. Amen. In other words, there, there's no swallow. <laughs> when Jesus speaks, it's, yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yeah. Principalities, rule, power, authority. Come on, somebody. There's no rule, there's no authority. <coughs> Might, you know what might is? Miraculous power has to bow. Amen, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Dominion, there's that word. And that's, dominion actually here means government. The, 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 the ruling authorities on the earth. God is far above all that. And guess who he took with him? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Every knee that is named in all ages. Woo-wee! Jesus is above that. Far above. He said all things are under his feet. That's interesting, isn't it? You theologians are already back there with me at Genesis, aren't you? Where God told Eve that she would have a son, she would have a seed that would bruise the head of the serpent, bruising his heel. Can you imagine that? The devil got a concussion <laughs> when Jesus stomped on him, and the bruise was his being separated from the Father for a minute second or whatever it was, hanging there on the cross of crucifixion. It was just a bruise. It wasn't life threatening. The devil ain't been the same since. He's kind of out of his mind. He's, he, he's got a concussion that he keeps getting. You know, the football players are CTE. I think the devil's got it worse. You know, he, he's losing his mind. He thinks he can win. He hasn't read the back. If he's read the back of the book, maybe he can't read it. Maybe he's lost his memory. But he's a loser. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Amen. All things are under his feet. And where am I in position? I'm with him. Hello? Gave Christ to be the head over all things to, verses 22b, 23. Look at this. Look at this. He gave Christ to be the head over all things to the church. Church. Not this building. You and I. Who did he give the rule and power and authority and all these things that are in fear? The church. Amen. His body. This always amazes me. Every time I preach on, on, on his body, it amazes me. Jesus is the head, and we're in his body. We are his physical representation on earth. <clears throat> and his spiritual representation. We are him on the earth. You get that? I love you. Nobody goes around seeing Jesus having fish fries anymore. He did. But he's not anymore. Why? He said, I'm going away. It's necessary. I go away, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He's going to be in you. He's going to be with you. He's going to reveal all this stuff to you. You're now my body. You are my representation. You're me on the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm him on the earth. You're him on the earth. The only Jesus they're ever going to see in bodily form until he splits the clouds by the way. Is you and me. Amen. Amen. That's right. With these eyes. Hello? Yes. How's our testimony? Yes. How's your faith? Yes. 
How's your hope? How's your love? Paul said in Corinthians, those three are going to remain. That's going to stay with you forever and ever and ever. I may not speak in tongues forever because I know all the languages then. Hallelujah. But I will be able to use the same love, same hope, same faith I'm operating in right now. It's going to last. Those are some of the things God has made available to you. And I, and I just, I, I had not really scratched the surface. I just kind of shot a shot over them. You know, just look at them as you go by. And let God begin to reveal to you. Because it has to come by revelation. It has to come by the spirit of wisdom giving it to you. But you seek Him. And He will show you. There's no demon on the face of this earth that can match you and Jesus together. Don't go at him alone, but you go at him with Jesus. And he's no match for him. I had one come to me in the night one night. He was he actually physically present there. I could see him. And uh, uh, I was awake, and, and he was talking to me, saying, Oh, you're worthless, you're not going to amount to anything. And while he was saying all that stuff, the Holy Spirit was speaking inside, saying, Remember, he's a liar. He said, Remember, he can't tell the truth. He doesn't even know the truth. So if he's telling you're all that, you can just take it the opposite. <laughs> and so I just started laughing. And I think it got me mad. You know, I was just like, I was just, oh, this is funny. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then I closed my eyes and I just said, Lord, I thank you that this liar has no power of authority over me. And I could tell I wasn't a bit afraid. There was no fear. Nothing whatsoever. Now, I don't want to go around seeing demons. I'm not one of those kind. I don't like to see. I don't, I, I don't, I'd rather never see one again. But I do know that when they are exposed, that means... They, don't, they do their best work when you don't know they're around. Amen. So if they're showing up, that means they're desperate. Yeah. Hallelujah. So don't worry about it. Just go to Jesus. Amen. He's your power and thought. Amen. Amen. Whatever you're going through today, Jesus cares. He's got the power. He gave you the dominion over. There's a reason and a purpose. So speak your hope. Proclaim your faith. And let your love turn to Jesus. Father, we love you. Thank you for your presence here today. Thank you for this precious group. I thank you for your word of truth that reveals your power to each and every one of us. I pray, God, if there's anybody here that doesn't know you, haven't surrendered their life yet to you, or they've grown cold, and, 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 and things have just not worked out, and they're just feel lost, Lord, that you would just renew them today and know that they found a place where they can be loved, Lord, and that you will, you're will you here to minister to them right now. In Jesus' name, every situation. Amen. Praise. Give you glory. Hallelujah. If you need to renew your life in Christ, why don't you just do it for you're sitting there right now to say, Lord, I surrender. I, 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 I come back to you. I, I'm sorry that I lost my faith. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you, Lord, for you. If you've never asked an answer, Jesus, come into my heart. I believe that you're the Son of God. You've shown me today that you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross for my sins. I surrender all I am to you. Forgive me for taking so long. I give you all I am to you right now, Jesus. Just pray something similar to that. Just let God speak to your heart yes. right now, right where you're sitting. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For those of us that feel like the world is overwhelming you, take, let the Holy Spirit encourage you today. Take back dominion of your life. Take back authority in Jesus' name. And no, you're not a victor. You're an overcomer. I said, you're not a victor. You're an overcomer. I love the scripture says you are more than conquerors, but you're overcomers. You know why I like that scripture? Because I'm only a conqueror as long as I'm winning. But an overcomer may lose, but he's going to get back up and he's going to keep coming at you. Hallelujah. So I'm glad he said we are overcomers. We overcome life. Amen. God bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. We're here to pray with you. And if you need to, to 
make a, a commitment of your faith if you did it at the pew, now make it public by coming up and letting us pray with you. Or if you have prayer or anything you want prayer for, we're here to pray with you. We love all of you. We say, God, sincerely bless you for being here. Uh, play cast, please don't leave until I get a chance to talk to you about our, our ministry sermon on Easter. Just give me a few minutes. And I have something i got to do right after this. But just give me five minutes and I'll be with you. All right. God bless you. We love you. See you Wednesday night, 6 o'clock for a meal at 6.30 to...
think you get to see some of it. Well, all right. Yeah, you're recording. So, goodbye. Nice having videos. So, yeah.